morning. It's Wednesday the 10th of June. I hope you're enjoying this book so far. I know I am. Sadly, flying did not agree with Hamish. His fur stood on end when the basket swayed, his whiskers drooped when he peered down at the wet blue sea, and he felt much too sick even to notice the seagulls, let alone scare them away from the lunch. Pretty Kitty likes a piece of lobster. This food gets better every day. Aren't you going to chase us, Kitty? So they're tormenting him. Poor Hamish. Why wasn't Hamish very good at frightening off the seagulls? That's your first question for today. Why wasn't Hamish very good at frightening off the seagulls? So there's your sentence starter. Hamish was not very good at frightening off the seagulls because... Okay, so he was not very good at frightening off the seagulls because he felt much too sick. Okay, you could write his fur stood on end because the basket swayed. His whiskers drooped when he peered down at the wet blue sea. Okay, so that makes us, we know that cats don't like water. Okay, so he was probably, he was feeling sick. He was a little bit high up. He didn't like heights. He didn't like the thought that if he fell out of the basket, he could drop into the sea. It could be any of those things, okay? But Hamish was not a very good plan, okay? I wonder what they'll come up with next. Lack a day, lack a day, said Mr. Grinling sadly. Meow, meow, agreed Hamish pitifully. On Wednesday evening, Mr. and Mrs. Grinling racked their brains again for a new plan. What shall we do? said Mr. Grinling. Mrs. Grinling looked thoughtful. I have it, she exclaimed. Just the mixture for hungry seagulls. Indeed, my dear, said Mr. Grinling. What have you in mind? Wait and see, said Mrs. Grinling. Just wait and see. Okay, for this, I don't want you to write an answer. Okay, it's another thinking exercise another thinking if you're doing this with your mom or your dad or your grown-up or your older brother or sister and they're reading it with you have a little chat like if you were in class and you had a talk partner have a little chat what do you think their new plan might be what do you think mr and mrs grinlin's plan might be like i say you don't need to write it down just pause the video and have a little chat for a minute ha ha Mustard sandwiches, cried, uh, chuckled Mr. Grinling. A truly superb plan, my dear. Truly superb. Why do you think this might be a superb plan? Have a think. Okay, I think this might be a superb plan because... Seagulls. Well, I don't know about you guys, but I would not like to eat a mustard sandwich. Would you? No, I didn't think so. I wouldn't like to eat a mustard sandwich. And I don't think the seagulls will like to eat a mustard sandwich. If they uncover the picnic and find a mustard sandwich, they're not going to come back the day after because it's horrible. And not only is it mustard, it is, we can see from the pot, extra strong mustard so it's going to be really really strong and it's going to taste yucky on its own fabulous well done morning everybody i'm um, on to our maths lesson then for today so let's get started here's our warm activity today with our flashback four okay these should be our quick fire ones that you know what you're doing we've been doing these for the last week and a little bit now. Uh, so pause the video, have a go, and come back to me when you are ready for your answers. Good luck, year two. Okay, here are your answers then. Are you ready? Let's go. So the first question was, how many animals are there all together? So our key tells us that one block is worth five animals. So five, 10, 15, 20 cats. 25, 30, cats and dogs, 35, 40, 45, yes, well done everybody. Second question, divide 18 by 2, 
18 shared by 2, 18 divided by 2, you're absolutely right, it's 9. Which coins are 4 5p's equal to? Okay, so I'm going to count in 5s. 5, 10, 15, 20 pence. And what's the difference? Find the difference between 17 and 9. So 17 take away 9, it's 8. Absolutely brilliant for our flashback for this morning. We're going to be working on subtracting two-digit numbers today. So have a little look at the learning video, follow it along and complete the activities, and I'll be back with some extra practice after that's all been finished. See you in a mim. Subtracting two-digit numbers today. And here we are again with our 11 eggs. I want to take two eggs and put them into my basket. Let's see how I can do that. I'm going to use the base 10 to represent the eggs. I've got a red 1 on its own, so I can put that straight into the basket. And then I want to take one more. I w I'm trying. I'm trying to take one more. But I can't take one from this 10. Because it's a 10. They stick together. And it will always be a 10. Hmm. What can I do? I know that 10 ones are equal to 110. So why don't I exchange... 10 ones for 110. Ah, perfect. Now I can take another cube and put it into the basket. Brilliant. 11 ones minus 2 ones is equal to 9 ones. Or 11 eggs minus 2 eggs is equal to 9 eggs. Here are four subtraction calculations for you to have a look at. What I'd like you to do is sort them into two categories. Calculations that need an exchange and calculations that do not need an exchange. Pause the video here to have a go. Great work. 19 minus 5 is in the wrong place and 14 minus 5 was in the wrong place. Let's have a look at why they're in the wrong place. Here's our 11. If we're subtracting 5, we haven't got 5 ones to subtract, so we'll need to exchange the 10 for 10 ones, and then we can subtract 5 ones. But over here with 25, subtract 5, we've got 5 ones, the perfect amount to subtract, and we'd just be left with 20. No exchange required. If I've got 25 and I'm subtracting 5, do I need to do an exchange? No, that's right. I've got 5 ones, so I can subtract those 5 ones. And I could subtract 4, 3, 2, 1 or 0 without having to do an exchange. So what number would I have to subtract? to cause me to do an exchange. Pause the video here and note down any numbers that would force me to do an exchange. Let's have a look. Did you get 6? I would have to exchange with 6, wouldn't I? Because I haven't got 6 ones, and 7, and 8, and 9. From this, I've found that when the ones digit in the number you're subtracting is greater than the ones digit in the number you're starting with, this is when an exchange is needed. Here's one for you to have a go at. 31 minus 5. The first question is, do you need to do an exchange? Yes, you do. Pause the video here and have a go. How did you get on with that? Did you subtract the one and realize we need to subtract four more ones? So we need to do an exchange. We exchange one ten for ten ones and then subtract one, two, three, four more, which means I've got 26 left. Have a go at this one. Pause the video here. It 
it's the same type of thing again. We haven't got eight ones that we can subtract. We can subtract five, but then we need to exchange a 10 for 10 ones and subtract three more, leaving us with 17. Here's four more for you to have a go at. Pause the video here. Good luck. How did you get on with those four? Here are the answers. We know that 42 minus 5 is equal to 37. But how does this look in the formal written method? Well, first of all, we need to ask, do I need to exchange? And yes, we do. So I'm going to take one of my tens and I'm going to exchange it for 10 ones. I've done that with our base 10 and we now need to make sure our formal written method reflects this. So we no longer have four tens. So I'm going to cross out our four tens and we actually have 12 ones. So I'm going to put a one in next to my two to show 12 ones. And just to make sure everything is okay on the formal written method, instead of having four tens, we've now got three tens. So I write a number three in there. I can now do my subtraction. I've got 12 subtract five, one, two, three, four, five, which leaves me with seven ones. And I've got three tens subtract well, nothing, no tens, which is three tens. And I've got 37 left over. Here's some for you to have a go at. Pause the video here and just do the first one, 20 subtract five. Good luck. How did you get on with that first one? Did you see that we needed an exchange so we cross out our two tens and we've moved 10 ones into our ones column and we've only got one 10 left in our tens column. And now we can do 10 subtract five, which is five and one 10 subtract no tens, which is still one 10. Pause the video again and have a go at the remaining three questions. Were you okay with those ones? Here are the answers. This time we've got a two digit number, subtract a two digit number. So how does this look? Well, exactly the same. We're going to start with our ones and we've got two ones and we need to subtract five ones, which we can't do. So we make an exchange with our base 10 and we're exchanging one 10 for 10 ones. And we show that on our formal written method by crossing through our four. We've now got 12 ones and three tens. Now we can do 12 subtract five, which gives us one, two, three, four, five. That leaves us with seven. And now we've got three tens and we need to subtract one of those tens, which leaves us with two tens. Here are four more for you to have a go at. Remember, start with the ones first and use the base 10 if it helps. Good luck. Pause the video here. Well done for doing those. Here are the answers. Okay, I hope you got on okay with your subtracting two digit numbers. Um, that's the end of your maths learning for today. If you want some extra practice though, I'm gonna add some extra to it. So here are some extra activities that you can do. You don't have to do them, but you can choose to do them. Um, so if you do want to do them, then please pause the video, have a go at what's on the screen and then come back to me and we're gonna go through each of the answers individually, okay? So pause the video.
Okay, let's see how we got on with those then. Here we go. So what number is represented? 10, 20, 30. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. 39. Subtract 12. So if I cross out a 10 and two ones, how many will I have left? 10, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27. So my calculation is 39 subtract 12 is 27. What number's represented here? 10, 20, 30, 1. 31. Subtract 12. Oh, that's a little bit more tricky. So I'm going to exchange this 10 for 10 ones to be able to help me with that. So then I would have 19 left. So it's 31 take away 12 equals 19. So it asks us what's the same and what's different. Did you spot it that you needed to swap exchange that one 10 rod for 10 ones? Well done if you did. Next questions. Pause the video, have a go and we'll go through the answers. So did you use base 10 to complete the subtractions? Did you use your lines and your dots? Or you made your own base 10 equipment to help you to work this out? If you didn't and you get them wrong, that might be a good solution to finding out the answers. Let's have a little look. So A was 23 take away 6 and that was 17. B is 33 take away 7 is 26. C is 33 take away 17 is 16. D 45 take away 26 is 19. E, 63 take away 35 is 28. And F, 82 take away 24 is 58. Well done if you managed to get all of those correct. If you didn't, remember we can learn from our mistakes. So the best thing you can do is pause the video and have another little go. And if you didn't use the base 10, maybe use the lines and dots to help you with that now. Let's have a look at Tommy's calculation. He's working out 23 take away five. And I wanted to talk you through Tommy's method. And the reason I want you to have a talk about Tommy's method is because we're gonna use it now in these questions. So use Tommy's method to complete these subtractions. Come back to me when you've got the answers to all six and we'll go through them together. Okay, let's see how we got on then. So lots of exchanging happening here. So 23 take away 6 equals 17. So I've got 3. Can I take away 6? No, it doesn't work. So I need to exchange and borrow a 10 from here. So that goes down to 110. And I put my 10 over here. So 13 take away 6 is 7. And then 1 take away nothing is 1. 110 take away no 10s is 110. So my answer is 17. It's the same here, look. 3 take away 7. Can't do it. Need to exchange. My three tens becomes two tens as I put my other ten over here. Thirteen take away seven is six. Two tens take away no tens is two. So we've got 26. Check the rest of your answers and if you've gone wrong, remember to pause, have another little go and see if you can learn from your mistakes. 33 take away 17 is 16. 45 take away 26 is 19. 63 take away 35 is 28. And 82 minus 24 is 58. They were pretty challenging today. If you've done those, you've done brilliantly well. Let's see what's left. Have a go at this last question and then come back to me when you're ready for your answers. This one was a little bit easier because we could use the drawings, the pictures to help us. How many bricks do Dexter and Rosie have all together? 10, 20, 30, 40, 41, 42, 43, 44, 45, 46, 47, 48, 49, 50, 51, 52. They've got 52 blocks all together. How many more bricks does Dexter have than Rosie? So this is a subtraction sum. So if Rosie's got 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19 bricks, that's almost 20, isn't it? So that would be 10, 11, 12, 13, and the one more that was almost 20, 14 bricks. Well done, everybody. 
Remember, if you want any more maths for today, if you've not had enough, then there's Times Table, Rockstars, Oxford Owl and the Top Marks websites that are all available to you. Mrs Upton's up next with her writing and her grammar and I will see you for more maths tomorrow. Bye everyone. Okay, Wednesday's learning. So, have a little peek at those zh words that are on the left hand side and then I want you to take your eyes away from the screen on the left. Hmm. I'm just thinking maybe I'll pop a little extra slide in that just has the screen. Okay, yeah, I'm going to do that. So let's have a little look at those words on the left. Have a look on the right and the words that you're going to be missing. And your job is going to be to write these out. No, I'm going to leave it all on one screen. I'm going to leave it up. I'm going to leave it up, guys. So, excuse me. You're going to have a look. At, I'm making a right pig's ear of this slide, aren't I? <laughs> little burp and going to change it, going to not. Oh, man, you can't get the stuff, can you guys? I'm, I'm going to pop without you all. <laughs> I need you all back. Okay, so the first word is going to be television. What two letters need to go in that space there? So have a look at your word television. And then on your paper, again, write the word out and filling in those missing gaps. Okay, so then you've got treasure. Fill in those missing gaps. Which sounds are missing? Write your words out again, but filling in the missing gap. This is making sure that you're not missing any letters by accident. Because if you learn them incorrectly, you're never gonna you're never gonna get them right in your brain, are you? So looking at each letter individually is gonna make sure that you get every single letter bob on. So I'm gonna want you to pause me in a moment, and you're gonna write each of these words filling in the missing letters. Okay? So pause me now. So, we need to think about engaging words. So, thinking about your story map that you created yesterday and your pictures, we're going to start thinking about the words that we're going to choose to put on there that's going to help us with our writing because we know that vocabulary is one of the most important things that we can do to engage our reader. So, here is my story map, my story mountain. I've drawn, I haven't drawn, who am I kidding? <laughs> I've taken these pictures. You can do it as well if you've got a printer at home, you want to print them out, then you can do that. I draw them. It would be easier for you. It's easier for me showing you through the computer, taking pictures, drawing, and then putting them on here would be too tricky for me. So the picture here that we've got is of the park. So the vocabulary that I'm thinking about using, incredibly fun, death slide, swing that takes you into space. Then I'm referring to the pool. I want to make sure I've got refreshingly fabulous pool. Now I'm putting this vocabulary here. You're going to hear it in my story. Okay, that's the whole point. I'm thinking this. I'm spending today. My only job is thinking about amazing vocabulary. So when I'm writing my story, it's easy. It's there. So refreshingly fabulous pool. I'm going to refer to the shark as the sinister shark. I'm going to refer to my net as a super strength net. And then I'm going to refer to the lorry as the industrial lorry with extra ah! industrial lorry with extra wide strength tanks. OK, so that that is my vocabulary. You have got your area in Britain. You have already drawn it. I've put here and draw it, but you've drawn it. Yeah, that was yesterday's job. So you have drawn the different parts of your story map you got it in drawings now you are adding the engaging vocabulary so when I am reading this I'm going to be engaged you might be frightening me like mine here is frightening you might be trying to make me drool because you're talking about really scrumptious food maybe you're at the, the chip shop or you're at the red lion maybe you're trying to make me feel happy you're trying to engage me by maybe you're at the church or at the co-op and you're having a look at some of the different nice things that you can buy from there. But think about what you want to do. When I'm reading this, how do you want me to feel? And what kind of words can you use to make me feel that? That is what you're doing today. So, same area. It says pick another. I don't want another. This same area. So you introduce it. You introduce your place. You move through it, you get to your problem, your resolution, your ending. It is the vocabulary that I want you focusing on today. What different vocabulary can you pick out in each of those areas that you are trying to eat? How you are. Hello, guys. So I am setting you some CC work for the next two weeks. And 
I've got a primary project and then some secondary projects and they all kind of link in together. But the one thing that I'm hoping you'll be able to have by the end of these two weeks is the primary project and then the secondary projects kind of link into it. So our topic for Connected Curriculum is still exploring Britain. And some of you have done some amazing exploration of Britain. So well done. You'll have already had a head start. If you want to have a look at this in more detail and you feel like there isn't quite enough here, there's loads of meat for you to get your teeth into on the website. So you can go to our school homepage and you will find it there. If you can think of some more amazing ideas on how to explore Britain, then do that. You are not confined to just doing this. These are just some ideas. So, this is a little overview. I don't know if you want to have a pause here. I'm not going to go through it all um, and have a little read of what it is that the areas that we need to be looking at. OK, so if you want to have a look at that, pause now. Here's the primary activity. So this is what I would love for you to complete. And it's going to link into our English work as well. Um, so if you can complete this, I would love it. So the primary activity, can you make a map of Britain and draw and label some of the physical and human features? So I would like, I don't know if you've got any old wallpaper that you could kind of roll out and do it on the back of. I've got some parcel paper that I would know that I would be able to do this on. I don't know if you can kind of get some cardboard boxes, maybe some cereal boxes and stick them together. I don't know. Is there a way that we could kind of make it on a bigger, some old wrapping paper? I don't know. But can we make this a large scale something? Because I, how I'm imagining it in my head is that it could be brilliant it could be a really exciting brilliant project that you could bring into school and we could put this on the wall in our classroom and it almost like fill a whole wall won't it so you can draw it you can make some models I was thinking maybe some little salt dough models that you could put on there or some play-doh models as well that shows your understanding maybe you've got some little toys maybe you've got a fire engine or a police engine and you could go down into Rugeley and you could draw the different fire stations but I don't know it is up to you however you want to do it there are no rules but I would love for you to draw a label a map of Britain and Rugeley what I thought would be a good idea is if you drew your house first so that's the thing that you know best so if you kind of draw that first and then does anybody you know live close by you kind of build up the houses in and around and then move it a bit further can you put so start from the house start from the people you know and the street that you're in and build up from there that's how I would do it anyway if you, you might have a different idea and your ideas are always better than mine so that's just where I think I would start and then once you've done those you can start to add in some of the man-made features can't you so you can start to add in some of those places that we're going to be looking at in our English as well it all ties in so if you could do this alongside that we're going to we're going to be nailing our learning so you can add in some of these man-made features and then are there any natural spaces I know you've got a lot of you've got the green in and around by your house so where's that think about where that is is it behind your house is it to the right to the left imagine that you're a bird flying above where you live above Britain and above Rugeley and you can see but down below you so it's a bird's eye view that you're going to be doing so like I said you may want to make your map using crayons paints felt pens models toys however you want to do it I also thought a nice idea might be if you go and out for a walk if you're saying oh where is that and trying to figure it out with your mums and dads you might want to take a picture if they've got a printer at home and they might be able to print out some of the pictures and stick it onto the map that might be a big job and some mummies and daddies might go I have not got the capacity to do that don't pressure them <laughs> so don't go oh but Mrs Upton said it's just an idea if that sounds fun for you and your family it has to work for you for you all so if that's not a good idea then there's loads of other good ideas that you can use so your primary activity the one connected curriculum thing that I would love for you to do over the next two weeks is create a map you might not get it all done in one day pop it away get it back out when there's a little low you think what should I do oh my map I'll work on my map okay because I want to see these I don't just want the email I want them coming into school so that is your primary activity if and when you finish that we have some secondary activities okay so once your map is complete we have some secondary activities so 
One of our objectives for our geography is to find a small town like Brayton in a different part of the UK. And Katie Morag on CBeebies is a good person. So maybe you can have a little search on the CBeebies app and maybe you can have a little look at some of the episodes. Can you find somewhere that is similar to Brayton or really different? And can you... I don't mind how you present it to me. You might want to do some writing. You might want to do a drawing of Britain and a drawing of wherever Katie is. Whatever you want to do to show me how Britain is similar and dissimilar to somewhere that you've seen. It doesn't need to be somewhere that Katie's been. It can be anywhere. Okay, it might be somewhere that you've been on holiday. It might be anywhere. You can compare any way that you want. Okay. Also, I thought another nice idea along the geography theme would be to add some geographical vocabulary. So words like beach, cliff, I'm not sure as many cliffs or coasts in Britain. You might want to add a little one on the edge somewhere just so you can do some of your uh, geographical vocabulary. Um, the sea, you might want to add some sea or ocean, river, soil. We've got a canal, haven't we? Um, I know there's an allotment as you go past them past the plum pudding up there um, so there's vegetation up there so I thought it might be a nice idea to add a map and I've given you a little example at the bottom so there's a map key there so it might be that you want to add in some little bits to your map and rather than it might be a bit overcrowded on your map to write them just in one corner of the map so that if someone's looking at it they'll go oh, okay there's a park there and uh, Mrs Upton's key for the park is this so you can add a key to your map and then I thought your third secondary activity, you can do any of these, they don't have to be in this order, the map's the primary and then all of these are secondary. I was thinking it might be a nice idea if we thought about a monument, something that we could, that we could put together to show how we have come through this very tricky time. We're still kind of in the midst of it at the moment, aren't we? But we're, we're living through history right now. In years to come, if you have children and when we're, you're all grown ups and you're looking back, this will be taught. People will talk about this and we will be in the history books and you can Google. You'll be able to Google it and go, no way, that never happened, did it? Really? So I thought it might be a really nice idea if we tried to think of a monument. You had a look. Mrs. Munner sent you some CC last time, didn't she? And it was doing the Angel of the North. Well, I thought, could we think of a monument that represents everything that we're going through right now? Is there a way that we could do a monument that shows everybody what we're going through right now? Can you make it or can you draw what you'd want it to be like? And then can you mark where you would put it so that most people would see it? on your map and have a think about why you'd put it there on your map would you put it there because it's a quiet place and people can go to it if they've lived through it and they're finding it tricky would you put it somewhere like the miners in town near uh, sea residential where you've got the four miners on the island near to the petrol garage and burger king that's in a place where loads of people see it and they can remind be reminded of where our town and community was built from it was built on the mining community a lot of it so where would you put your monument on this page I've got some ideas. So these are some different monuments, just as some ideas. You could have a little search of what you think a good idea for a monument might be, and you could draw it. Now remember, a monument is inspiring and positive. We want to show how we have are going to come through this stronger and better than before. So it needs to be a really, when you look at it, you think it gives you a message. It's a powerful message. That was a really tricky time, and look, we came through it. Look how strong we are so if you can design something that screams out empowerment and then talk about where it can go on your map I'd love to see that good job guys